All right, what's up? Good morning, everybody. Good morning, PT on Ice. Apologize for kind of a later start. We've got rising tide prep uh, going this morning, so we're trying to make sure everything's dialed in. I actually just got a text message from Eisenhart, so those guys are already down there um, getting organized, so we can't wait to get to Albuquerque, uh, flying people in from all across the country. Um, got a great group of 30-plus people. It's, it's going to be just a hoot uh, on, on this weekend. So uh, my apologies for a bit of a late start, but it was for a good cause. Uh, hope to see a lot of you down there this weekend. Um, and if not this year, um, hopefully we can catch you next year. Um, looking at locations, um, Asheville, North Carolina, certainly on the docket um, as being an area that we might want to explore. So um, anyhow, I, I wanted to come on and, and chat about something a bit different because you know, a lot of my world now is, is involved in, in really selling of what we do, right? And, and whether that is, is, to, is to organizations or, or to people, uh, that is definitely where a lot of my focus and thought is going nowadays. And I think it's an area that we struggle with continually and that we should occasionally revisit and try to give some tips and thoughts and, and brainstorm. So I'm, I'm bringing this up today because, you know, recently I was, I was at a pitch. So we are routinely talking to companies um, around Northern Colorado um, about bringing in, you know, musculoskeletal rehab providers to mitigate healthcare costs by addressing musculoskeletal pain complaints um, and some of the sequela of that and helping them understand, you know, why it works so well and, and how it can happen and, and getting past their mental barriers. It, it, it's this wonderful game of, of trying to, to play that chessboard just right so they really see the tremendous value that we can bring. And, you know, a couple weeks ago we were at a pitch and it was very clear that it wasn't going to go through that day. Right. So you can tell early on because, you know, the companies will say, you know, just just so you guys know, you know, the, the, the budget has had some major issues or this or that. And, and you can tell they're they're putting up those defenses early. Right. And the problem is that can get very discouraging. And if you get discouraged, it's definitely going to show in your pitch. Right. And so that's where the concern is, is that if you let that that thought of I'm not going to make the sale now get you down, it will show up in the enthusiasm you have, in the vision you paint, right? And so you have to avoid that. And the way you avoid that is you realize that you're selling tomorrow, right? And that, that, that is fine. In fact, and I'll argue this at the end, it might be better, right? And so you immediately realize at that moment of, hey, this might not go through right now. Now I'm selling tomorrow. And by selling tomorrow, what I mean is you're, you're telling that company, look, You've got this problem. This is the best solution. Now, you're not saying that, right? But you're painting this picture of, I know that you have this problem, that the problem is getting worse, that you don't have another viable solution because there really isn't one, right? And that this is going to be your solution, be it now, be it in two weeks, be it in six months. The faster and the better that you can sell that solution, right, the quicker they're going to come around and the more aggressively. Because once that meeting adjourns and they're talking in the next few months go by, when they finally realize we've got to do something, we've got to do something, they, there's no, if you did your job right selling tomorrow, their reflex thought is going to be, well, let's go back to that guy. Or let's go back to that gal. Remember when they came in, they had that great pitch and we weren't ready then, but we are ready now, right? The better your pitch was in selling tomorrow, the less discouraged you got that it wasn't going to go through today, but you still wanted to paint a really clear picture about the value and about how you're going to do it. And the, the more you embraced that you were now selling tomorrow, when that moment of we've got to do something comes along, the better job you did, the, the quicker they're going to think, well, let's go with that one group. Remember when they came in and they were so enthusiastic and they really seemed to have a plan, like we couldn't do it then. Somebody get those folks on the, on the phone and let's make a deal, right? And so if you realize it's going to play out that way, you wind up not being as discouraged when you realize the deal's not going to go through right now. And instead you shift gears and begin really painting that vision because you know they're going to bite tomorrow. Now where that shows up in patient care, Right, and I think it's all the same, right? I mean, sales and, and human beliefs and behavior, it, it all wraps together, is that we tend to expect to get dramatic behavioral change or buy-in from our patients immediately, like on day one. And, and the argument I wanna make is, you are not trying to sell that strong of a commitment on day one. You're just trying to get them to keep shopping for days two, three, and four. Right, That's really what you're trying to do. You're not trying to make the full sale for the full bill of goods and get the full commitment on day one because that is not reasonable. 
right? That's not how transactions happen. That's not how human relationships happen, right? So what you want to do is you're, you're not trying to convince someone to understand the central, the, the, the neurophysiology that drives central sensitization that explains why they're having chronic pain on day one. That is not what you're trying to do. All you're trying to do is convince them that pain is a bit more complex than they originally thought and that this person really seems to have some answers, right? That's what you're trying to convince them of. That it isn't exactly as they always saw it and that this seems to be a great place for resources. I'm not trying to get someone to understand why degenerative changes aren't symptomatic. I'm trying to get people to understand that MRIs aren't perfect. Right? And just that little bit of doubt, right? The MRIs aren't perfect. Right? And so maybe, maybe there should be some more discussion along those lines. That's what we're looking for. I'm not trying to get someone to be a regular exerciser on day one and fully commit. I'm trying to get them to realize that movement might be an important piece to all this and that it can be scaled to suit them if they desire. So what I'm trying to say is that we go for way, way, way too much on day one and we get discouraged and you can see that discouragement and I'm saying that from watching a lot of people when I'm mentoring in the clinic I can see where they feel like the patient hasn't fully bought in well of course they haven't fully bought in it's day one right all you're doing on day one is trying to cast some doubt right trying to get them to believe this is a trusted spot for resources if I do want to explore this more this is definitely where I should go Right, those are the kind of things you want to inspire hope on day one. Right, that I think it might get better. Right, this person seems to have a plan. These are the kind of mental commitments you want people to make on day one. If, if you go for that full sale, if if you feel them dig their heels in a bit, but you want it so bad that you try to push them over, you I, I can I can very very confidently say that you might lose that that pitch, whether it's to a company or whether it's to a person who you're working on with musculoskeletal issues, you might lose that pitch long term as opposed to recognizing when you're getting a bit of pushback and then being willing to paint a much broader picture, right? One that's laced with hope, one that has hints of a plan and one that casts a bit of doubt on current conceptions. You might lay that down, right? And that is something that person's going to think, you know what? I'm going to hang around and shop on days two, three, and four. Now, here's the real kicker though. Okay, this is where this is what I really need you to embrace is that an idea that is properly marinated will generally come with bigger action when the trigger is pulled. Now that that I that I have seen over and over again, right? So what I'm saying is that when you're in with let's say in my world, when I'm in with one of those companies and I am trying to get them to understand the value of bringing in a rehab expert and doing doing some first aid and doing prevention health promotion and really coming alongside this skyrocketing issue they're having with musculoskeletal pain and claims. If I'm trying to, to get them to, to embrace that concept, right? If I can paint a good picture and really help them understand what it would look like and how it would work and, 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 and why conceptually it's, it's sellable, the longer they wait and marinate, like the, the more we just sprinkle in stuff and the more time they give it, when they do pull the trigger, it tends to be a bigger pull because they've thought about it, they've consulted other people, they've gotten key yeses, they've got more people on board, and now all of a sudden they circle back and they say, you know, Jeff, you, you had brought in you know, a couple different levels. We, we want to go all in. We've tried other things. We've evaluated the, the overall outcomes of those measures. It isn't working very well. What you seem to be saying really makes sense to us. We've talked to the whole team, and we want all in. Right? When people come back, when your patients come back, and you have sprinkled in these concepts over a few months right, about making some, some basic nutritional changes, right, and all of a sudden they come back on like you know week six or eight, their chance of making legitimate actions deeper because they've already talked to their spouse about it a bunch of times, right? They've now, they've now changed how they're grocery shopping, right? They've decided they're going to cook more at home and they have made team decisions that this is a go. And so when they come back and say, you know what? We, we've thought a lot about it. We've made some changes. We're going to do it. We are all in. That is a stronger sale than on day one going so hard that they give you a little bit of, yeah, I should do that, I've thought about it, I'm gonna make a little bit of change, right? But you, you've driven so hard on day one, you haven't let the idea properly marinate, right? And I, I really believe that it's when you let people think about things, 
when you pitch it in a way that you aren't worried so much about selling day one, that you pitch a future vision or sell, sell tomorrow, that people go away and think and reason, if your idea is sound, the purchase that they wind up making is much larger, right, than you ever could have accomplished on day one. And that's why the title is, you know, sell a dinner for two tonight or a cruise tomorrow. I think about in any sales, I don't care if you're selling vacation packages, right? If you let people go away and think about it and your idea is sound, they are going to compare and contrast that to other ideas. They're going to think about why other things haven't worked. And they're going to realize, you know what? I think that guy was right. And the more I think about it, the more I believe that. And now they're going to consult relevant partners. Maybe it's their spouse when you're in the clinic. Maybe it's their business partners when you're on site. And they're going to say, you know what? Look, we're, we're, we're doing a T-chart for all competing options. There's no getting around that one those guys pitch makes the most sense. Do we all agree? And let's go all in if we do. So my big statement this morning is whether you're in clinic trying to change someone's understanding of pain or trying to get them to exercise more or trying to get them change, to change the way they eat, don't be so worried about a small change today that you lose the chance and the enthusiasm to really give them those fundamental information and, and plans forward so they can buy a much bigger change tomorrow, right? Don't be so obsessed with selling today you forget to sell tomorrow. And if you can learn to sell tomorrow, what you're going to feel in those, in those meetings, in those patient sessions is so much more confidence and calmness because even though you might feel it slipping away right now, you have now shifted your focus and you know it's ever more important that you paint that picture today so they can marinate on it. So the action a month from now can be bigger than anything you ever would have pulled off today. And before I leave, I want to give a couple shout outs because a lot of people have have lent me you know, towards this way of thinking. And one of those is Mike Eisenhart in his phrase that pays. If you guys didn't catch that PT on ice, go back and listen because Mike makes some great points that we're not gonna beat people in the head with, with RCT data and they're gonna change. We're gonna say things that are sticky, that make them keep thinking and marinating. Like, God, that really makes sense. Like, every time I think about it, right, you know, you know, the movement is a window into future health, right? In, in all these different thoughts that just don't go away in your mind. And pretty soon it's like, I got to do something about this because it just keeps making more sense, right? I love when Tim says that data doesn't change behavior, right? Information doesn't change behavior. It's when you, when you give an example, right, or lead people or give them that phrase that makes them keep thinking that they change their own behavior, right? And Greg Lehman talking about the boomerang, right? Being willing to let a patient go, to think about this stuff only to return back later on down the road fully ready to commit right because they went away and thought boy this pain science stuff sounds crazy but you know I've been thinking about it and nothing else is making sense and what you said certainly lines up with my experience I've actually read a bit about it and it really does seem to fall in line with current best evidence and now they come back to the clinic open and ready to dive in right because you weren't too aggressive early on you have set a stage for a big sale tomorrow. So I hope that makes some sense. Um, I, 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 love, I love these sales concepts because if we can't sell people on what we understand, we can't create change. Like that's all there is to it. And if we don't lead people well, and if we don't know how to work those scenarios, we're going to wind up in a spot where we have great information that does nothing for society. And to me, that's not a win. So we need to be able to learn how to compose ourselves in these situations, um, how to capitalize, how to be patient, um, and how to make great change down the road. So don't sweat selling today. Know you're usually selling tomorrow and that tomorrow is going to be a bigger action than you ever could have gotten from today. So guys, have a great day. I am on a flight to Albuquerque. I am out of here. We are going to be running um, and hiking and up before sunrise. And this is going to be an interesting couple of days. Um, those of you who are going to be there, we'll see you soon.